hole in the wall was huge enough for at least one inmate to climb through it into the zone or cell block next door to his and stab a fellow inmate there, says interim Fulton County Jail Commander Curtis Clark. Arena that we are operating now, things of this nature, um, happen far too often. Colonel Clark says the stabbing victim received non-life-threatening wounds and has been moved to the jail medical unit while the suspected attacker faces the likelihood of criminal charges over the incident. And after the stabbing, a shakedown of both the zones involved, which are supposed to be separated by two heavy locking doors, and each containing 18 cells, turned up seven items of contraband, including at least five weapons. Found shanks were made from parts of the building. Jail official says this door is supposed to have a lock on it, but an inmate or inmates gained access to this pipe chase in one zone and made this hole, gained access to the shower in the zone next door, and an inmate was able to bypass two heavy metal doors that are supposed to separate that zone from this zone of cells next door where the stabbing occurred. Colonel Clark says the hole through masonry clearly took time and effort. An idle mine is the devil's workshop. This piece of sheet metal right here, somebody's probably gonna try to make a shank out of that if it's not fixed, right? No doubt. This right here. Inmate kiosk. All of this is stuff that could be used to make weapons. Absolutely, and it, it presents a constant challenge for us to el eliminate things like this from access to the inmates. These things that tunnel symptoms of an aging, dangerous jail. Absolutely, Mark. This jail has clearly outlived its useful life, and our daily job is to make it as safe as we possibly can, not only for staff, but for the inmates as well. For these kind of issues, you lose sleep about the safety of your people and your inmates. Mark, I have lost so much sleep since being assigned uh, to run this location or this facility. It's, it's, it's really, it's difficult to talk about. A homemade hole in the wall was huge enough for at least one inmate to climb through it into the- Pieces of the decrepit Fulton County Jail now being fashioned into shanks and other weapons. The Sheriff's Office says an inmate dug that hole through a shower wall to get into the cell block next door and stab another inmate with those shanks. That inmate suffered some small stab wounds and is recovering. The offending inmate will now face new criminal charges. The jail commander used this incident to double down on the jail's crumbling infrastructure. The jail made headlines in recent months after a family claimed an inmate was eaten alive by bed bugs. And a month ago, the Fulton County Board of Commissioners voted to approve more than $5 million to help fix the jail. ...announced the 16-year-old arrest on Monday. He says the teen is from Clayton County. Now, this is the third suspect to be arrested in connection to the deadly shooting. APD says they previously arrested and charged another 16-year-old and 15-year-old. If you recall, 12-year-old Zion Charles and 15-year-old Cameron Jackson were killed in the shooting over the Thanksgiving weekend. Investigators believe it was gang related and that Jackson was the target. Now, why would a man take all that time to dig a hole through the wall, Candyman style? Let's find out. Use this time to go ahead and hit the like button, comment if you got a comment, and make sure you subscribe. All right, block gang, let's get into it. The Rodney, who's more commonly known as Lil Rodney, was one of six teens arrested in connection to a fatal shooting. November 26, 2022. It was 8 p.m. when Atlanta police responded to 17th Street in reference to multiple people shot. Upon arrival, officers located 12-year-old Zion Charles dead at the scene with a gunshot wound to the head. 15-year-old Cameron Jackson was also found with a gunshot to the head, and while unresponsive, he was still alive. Four other teens have been shot, but were in stable condition as officers began investigating what took place. Speaking with an off-duty officer and Atlantic Station security guards, they stated they'd escorted a group of minors away from the train station for disorderly behavior. Something then caused the situation to escalate, resulting in gunfire on 17th Street a block away. Cameron Jackson would be treated at Grady Hospital, where it was determined the 15-year-old was brain dead after a bullet entered the back of his head without exiting. 
Three days after the shooting, he'd be pronounced dead. And on November 30th, investigators would determine he was the intended target of the shooting without stating why. His mother would speak with the news in the days that followed. I homeschooled Cameron so that I could make sure that Cameron was, you know, the best student that he could be. And I have his coach here with me. Cameron has been boxing since he was nine. And we would take him to boxing like every day. This is not about Cameron. This is not about that other little kid. This is about all of our children. You know, listening to the other mother speak about not having the resources. You know, in my situation, Cam we had all the resources. But the one thing that we were unable to deal with was the community, the environment, the city and that right there is something that I'm committed to transforming in Atlanta. While speaking highly of her son and condemning the community, one can only wonder why a 15 year old boxer with all the resources to succeed would be targeted and gunned down. But a closer look into Cameron's life outside the gym would reveal an entirely different lifestyle than the one shared by his mother. Cameron was more commonly known as Lil Cam, and on his own Instagram, he could be seen posing with a variety of guns, including a story post of him riding in the passenger seat armed with a Glock with an extended magazine. Now while Georgia has some of the most relaxed gun laws in the country, Lil Cam had turned 15 just weeks before his death and no law allows a 14 year old to carry handguns. But aside from the weapons, it's alleged his blood relation to his older brother is the reason for his murder. Lil Cam was the younger brother of none other than Jaree Jackson Jr., who's more commonly known as 25 year old Atlanta rapper, Ola Run. The rapper who spent five years in prison and was released in 2018 began quickly gaining attention in the city and in 2020 was even sent the 1017 chain leading many to believe he was signing to Gucci who he hadn't even met. The $1 million deal never went through and later that year Ola Runt would be one of 12 arrested by the FBI in Operation Phoenix. He'd be indicted by the feds after being found in possession of a FN 5.7 pistol loaded with 21 rounds and after a guilty plea, he'd be sentenced to 57 months in federal prison. It's unlikely the sentencing of 57 months had anything to do with the FN 5.7, but goddamn what a coincidence. It's believed Lil Cam was targeted because of who his brother is and his brother's alleged gang affiliation. A total of six teens would be arrested for the murder of Lil Cam and the death of 12 year old Zion, even though Zion was part of the group that killed Cam. Zion was known as Lil Hot, and while his friends fired at Cam's group, one of Lil Hot's friends accidentally fired a bullet into the back of his head, which exited his face and killed him instantly. It was a reckless hit, gone all the way wrong, and done by kids as the suspects are aged between 14 and 17. Lil Rodney can be seen in a photo with Lil Hot, and it's alleged Lil Rodney was bragging about killing Cam while in jail. What Rodney didn't know was an alleged affiliate of Ola Runt was right next door in the cell block. Kavian Thomas, who's more commonly known as Draco, is said to have stabbed Lil Rodney as get back for Cam. And not only that, it's alleged that while Rodney was getting stabbed, he'd cry out that he didn't do it and name the actual killer. All of this is alleged to have been recorded on video by a cell phone within the jail, but the video has yet to be released. It's unclear if Draco meant to punish Rodney or torture him until he found out who actually killed Cam. But his determination in digging through a fucking jail wall to get to a rival gang member. There it is, black gang. So you have this young gentleman here who tunneled through the wall because of Cameron Jackson, rest in peace. Uh, he lost his life on that 17th Street Bridge. Uh, so this guy did tunnel through the wall to get revenge for young Cameron, allegedly. And he did stab the young gentleman several times. 
Uh, make sure you hit that like, comment, subscribe, voice box of the block, man. I'm out.